Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Mayleaf, a security researcher with the Krebs Stamos Group. I am honored to be invited here today uh, to the Women in Cybersecurity Middle East Conference. Thank you for joining me for my lightning talk, Transitioning to Cybersecurity in Mid-Career, A Risk Worth It or Not. I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes or so sharing some personal insights about my journey into cybersecurity mid-career and give some tips and some advice on how it may help you as well. So thanks for joining me and let's get started. So this is my story. Let's start with that. It's a blank page in some ways and some of you have a blank page to start from. So let's think about it that way. But I like to think about my story, how it looks on paper. Because you see, on paper, many would strongly believe that I have no business being in an information security job. Because on paper, I am a woman, and let's say of a certain age, I have no tech industry experience. I have two liberal arts degrees from university, as well as a Master of Library and Information Science degree. Now, some people see all that and think, well, she's not information security material. But you want to know who didn't believe that? Who knew that I am more than just what you see on paper? Me. I believed in me. My husband believed in me. My family believed in me. My friends believed in me. But you know what? I really believed in me a lot. And that's what matters the most. So should you change careers now? I don't know. But let's talk about my journey and some of the specifics that I went through, and hopefully that'll help you decide. So my journey starts much like this. This is a real train photo of the train <laughs> I was on uh, when I commuted in and out of the city of Philadelphia from the suburbs to my job at a law firm where I worked as a law firm librarian. I worked in law firm libraries for about 10 years. Uh, but I started to get a little sad in the fall of 2014. I felt like I had gone as far as I could in that career. I worked really hard to get to a good level of a job at that law firm library. And I kind of looked around and thought, is this it? Is this is what I worked so hard for? <laughs> the only other position up was a library director and that was more people management and not really doing any, any library work. So I wasn't really sure what I was doing with my life and I got really sad. Fall turned into winter and I just, you know, started finding things to read on the train to try and keep my mind off of the sadness I had going in and out of work every day. And I was very sad. Uh, and again, people might be wondering, well, why was she so sad? Think about it. You worked so hard to get a master's degree, to get a job in a career that you thought was going to be, you know, the career for your, the rest of your life. And you did well at it <laughs> to the point that there was nowhere else to go, you know, but out. And that's kind of a scary prospect. And that made me cry on the train. And I don't mean like gentle gentle tears, I mean like full-on ugly crying where I had to wear my sunglasses. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm dramatizing a little bit, but I was not, I, I was a sad kitten on the train. So, you know, I looked around at Library World and, and really wondered, you know, is this what I wanted to be doing with my life? What, what could I do to change things? So, I first applied for other library jobs and you might be thinking, you know, why, why did, why would you do that? So I declared 2015 the year of my career and I decided that I was going to spend every moment of 2015 really exploring. Did I still, you know, want to be in library science? Did I want to change careers? So I, I spent January of 2015 interviewing for other library jobs, as I said a second ago. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted to make sure that library science was really out of my system, right? Uh, that I really didn't have a long name for these other jobs I was applying for. And I applied for three jobs. I got three interviews at three different law firms and realized that it was more of the same. You know, even just changing companies, changing law firms wasn't really going to be enough of a change for me. So 
even if you don't work in a library now, it's a good idea just to make sure you're really good leaving where you are. You know, it it's not that you can't go back, but it's kind of easy to keep, keep going forward than it is to backtrack. So I would say the first tip is really have a hard think and and even go on interviews for other companies and see, are you really ready to move on? Now, I also want to share this article with you. This is the actual article I read on the train when I was a sad kitty. Uh, this is from Entrepreneur Magazine, and it came out in December of 2014. Remember, I told you the fall and winter of 2014 is really when I uh, had some introspection and was really trying to decide what to do with my career. And I saw this headline, Future Proof Your Career in 2015. Now, remember, I had declared to myself, you know, 2015 was the year of my career. So I wanted to read this article. And you see, I highlighted a part here that says, uh, facing too many challenges for too long can cause chronic stress and erode health and well-being. Remember I told you I was crying on the train? Yeah, I think that was a big red flag, <laughs> that it was uh, eroding my health and well-being. So one of the other pieces of, of information I got out of this article was it mentioned about finding a common thread in all, you've, all of my past jobs, all my past classes, what really inspired me and gave me, me reason and purpose. And for me, that was tech. That was anything tech related, I really gravitated towards despite never having pursued a career in tech before. But that's a, a topic for a different talk. So I do recommend this reading this article. I think it you can find it as useful as I did. But this is what really spurred me to dip a toe <laughs> into the giant pool. You see this giant pool here. Uh, the giant pool of tech. Dip, you know, dip my foot in it. Did I like it? Uh, so I decided again now beginning February 2015, I went to all sort of uh, meetups, workshops, classes, events. I tried to absorb everything in tech, but it still just wasn't resonating with me. Um, it wasn't until a friend introduced me to cybersecurity and I took a two-part workshop from the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu for an introduction to cybersecurity class that it really made me think, oh, where has this been my whole life? And it became my quirky hobby. So by September of 2015, I boldly reached out to the chief information officer of the law firm where I worked and asked, what is the law firm doing for Cybersecurity Awareness Month next month, which is which was October of 2015? Uh, to which he responded, what's, what's Cybersecurity Awareness Month? But I was prepared. I had a proposal already typed up. It was a five point plan of how to do security awareness for the entire firm. And I sent it to the CIO. Now, what was the worst that was could happen? Either he said no, or he ignored it. But either way, the risk was relatively low, right? This is this talk is all about, is the risk worth it? So to my surprise, he replied and said, I love it, we're doing all of this, and you're in charge. Now remember, I was still the librarian with the quirky hobby of cybersecurity, and I was put in charge of the firm-wide cybersecurity awareness plan for the month of October. But because I put in the work and you know, really did make this my hobby, I did have enough knowledge to pull this off and it was successful. So then in November, 2015, I asked the CIO, what else could I do for the law firm as far as cybersecurity goes, still as the librarian at the firm? And his response was, well, you can do that again next year. Well, that wasn't enough for me. And uh, to speed up the timeline of my story, I started to formulate an exit plan. I spoke with my husband, we discussed our financials, and I was able to start my own business in early 2016, which was called Sherpa Intelligence. And I quit my law firm job. And I had this Sherpa Intelligence job where I spent my time networking, reading, going to classes, going to workshops, getting 
getting consultant uh, jobs or getting piecemeal work as a researcher or social media manager. I was using all of the skills that I had from library science and library world in order just to, you know, make some some money while I was studying and really getting to know the cybersecurity world. I did that for a year and a half before I landed my first cybersecurity job in a technical role in a SOC, a security operations center. And that is a very rushed version of my story. And I'm rushing through it is because I want to be able to give you tips. And this is what we're going to get into now. So how did I do all that? So I have some direction directions here. Uh, hopefully they will resonate with you and help put you in the right direction as well. So the one thing I want you to really concentrate on is your transferable skills. You did not get to mid-career of where you are without amassing some really valuable skills that you may not think are valuable. And I tell people all the time, if you told me that you have only ever worked at McDonald's or some other fast food place, I can think of at least maybe four or five transferable skills off the top of my head that would be very useful in cybersecurity, like working under pressure, working with end users, you know, working with technology, working with with different types of technology in the kitchen, uh, working with, you know, with people, with your coworkers. All of those are transferable skills. So if you've only ever worked retail or food service, you still have skills that are important and useful and needed in cybersecurity. But if you've worked in accounting or finance or, or anything else, any job that you've had, there is very most likely transferable skills that you can think of. Now, Someone can't necessarily tell them what they are for you. You kind of have to feel it yourself. Uh, but think about it. Think this, These are some examples here. And this is what you have to explain to someone when you're, you know, when you're trying to change your career. You know, you, you can say, yes, I do not have technical experience, but I have all these other transferable skills that are valuable to you. Something that was said to me during an interview was, you know, we can teach you the tech. We just can't teach a technical person all these other skills you offer us. And that was how I was able to get my first cybersecurity job is because I came with all these transferable skills from library science that had value to this security operations center. And then they taught me the tech and I, and I was able to excel in that and learn that. And then I was off and running in my cybersecurity career. So I came up with something that I hope might be helpful for you. I call it my three ends, needs, networking, and news. So first needs, what are your professional needs? If you're going to cause upheaval in your personal and professional life by changing careers, what do you want out of a job, out of a company, out of yourself? Do you need another university degree to accomplish or do you just need training and certificates? You know, in order to help figure that out, I recommend looking at job postings. Now, look at job postings, whether or not you are qualified for the job. That doesn't even matter whether or not you're qualified. What you're looking at here is just types of jobs in cybersecurity, whether it's a dream job or just something that looks interesting to you. And it's helpful if you pull together maybe five or ten of these jobs that you think look really interesting to you. Put them side by side. What's the common thread? Remember I mentioned that article uh, that I read on the train when I was a sad kitten, mentioned about finding common threads between things that you like. If, if eight out of those 10 jobs that you pulled aside require knowledge of Python, then guess what you put on your personal learning list? Learning Python. So that covers needs. Figure out what your needs are, what, ne what needs you need to fulfill in order to get a job that you want. And then networking. Now, I cannot stress enough how important networking is, both kinds, with humans and computer networks. You can't defend what you don't understand, so having some fundamental knowledge of a network uh, operation and how information travels over the internet will help you better understand your new industry of choice. Now, if it's something that you really like and want to pursue further, there's a lot more you can do with that and get some advanced education. But if you just have a very basic understanding of it, that's a good start. 
And then networking with people can help you learn and grow, can help you get introduced to people hiring for jobs. You can learn knowledge from them. So networking people and computers is important. And then news. In my experience, keeping current on news is very beneficial to your career development. Practice being able to explain ransomware headlines in the news to a non-technical audience. Why is that important? Because one day, what may stand between you and an improved security budget may be a chief financial officer who does not have technical knowledge. Also, practice in your head how you might possibly remediate a cybersecurity situation mentioned in the article. You know, once you do network and meet more skilled folks, you can practice your answers with them. So those are my three ends that I think are really useful. But I don't want you to forget that there's a human side of cybersecurity. Find your community. You know, whether it's this group here, you know, the uh, the Wix, Wixme <laughs> group or the or the Wesis group. For me, it was Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. There is a community all over the world, online or in person, of other cybersecurity professionals or people wanting to get in cybersecurity. Um, never forget that information security is human centric. We are defending humans from other humans through computers. So really understand that there is a psychology to this. There are a lot of people skills related to this. And I, I saw this, this sentence, this sentiment, which I really loved and I wanted to put it on here, which is, you know, you're connecting minds for a better and safer world. That's a great thing to embrace. That is the humanity of cybersecurity, really understanding that there is a human element that needs to be addressed and connected to. And that is what you're really doing here is you're you're protecting people from each other who are using the conduit of a computer network or an email or some other digital prospect. And that's pretty admirable. So I saw this this quote, uh, this excerpt, pardon me, this, this scripture, and uh, I wanted to, to share it in here uh, because it, it, it seemed very meaningful to me. And I, I liked this photo too because um, I feel like it, it goes together. I, I really want you to reach for opportunities. I want you to do good for yourself. Uh, you know, you. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to believe that you can help people. That you can you can change your situation. Cybersecurity jobs typically pay better, so you might be able to improve, you know, your financial standing by making a career change. Um, it's it's a lot here that. There's a lot of good in the world that you can do. You can really, you know, do a lot of things for yourself, for your friends, for your family, for the world, if you're doing good uh, by making a career change into cybersecurity. Now, maybe that's not exactly what this this line of scripture means, but that this is what it, it speaks to me. And coupled with this photo is I really want you to, you know, reach for the sun. I want you to, you know, it might look really far away, but look how the... The sunbeams are in that person's hand. They're grasping it. You know, I want you to reach out, reach for your dreams, um, you know, and just really do good for yourself uh, because that's remember who needs to believe in you is you. Uh, so kind of uh, some closing thoughts here. Again, this is something if you're mid-career, you might be a little older than your typical recent university graduate, but that's not a detriment. That, that's a positive. You know, think about all the knowledge you've gained, all those transferable skills. You know, a recent university graduate might have book knowledge, but you have book knowledge in addition to all kinds of life knowledge, which you can really see a cybersecurity problem uh, holistically. You can see the, the networking side of the computers. You can see the human side of the psychology. And this quote is from a Broadway actress, American Broadway actress named Paige O'Hara. She said, I'm older and wiser, but I still dream of doing new things and creating new things. And that's something I really want to impress upon you all. Just because you're mid-career doesn't mean that you have to stop dreaming about professional uh, heights or you don't have to stop dreaming about creating new things. You still have lots of time left to dream and create. And just to, to kind of close things up here, the big question for this, this title of the session, was it risk? Is it worth it? 
Well, there's risk and reward, right? And there is a lot of risk jumping from run one rock to another, which could represent one, one profession to another. You know, there's risk and there's reward. You know, figure, figure it out. Figure out your own SWOT analysis, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threats. You know, do you have transferable skills, your strengths? You know, do you have opportunities? Are there job openings that, that fit your, your interests and your skill set? Your know, weaknesses, what do you maybe need to study, like Python? And threats, are, you know, are you experiencing your accounts, you know, getting, getting compromised or... Uh, are you noticing a lot of companies you deal with have been been compromised? I just want you to understand that there is risk in everything, but there's also reward in everything. So I think that it is w very much worth the risk, but that's ultimately up for you to decide for yourself. But remember, think of the reward and think of all the good that you can do. I believe in you. Do you believe in you? I want you to go forward and believe. Believe that you can do this. Believe that you can protect the world and change the world. Believe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Tracy Mayleaf. I'm also known as InfoSec Sherpa. And if you check out my link tree here, uh, you can see a list of articles I've been in or blog posts or talks that I've been I've given. And uh, I thank you very much for uh, this time and I wish you much success and please reach out and let me know if you also successfully made a mid-career transition. Thank you.